The last two years have been a whirlwind for car prices, but it certainly is not the only whirlwind that we have been experiencing since the start of the pandemic. The rental car industry has been an absolute roller coaster ride as well. You see, in 2021, whenever we saw used and new car prices explode due to supply and demand issues, this explosion also trickled down to the rental car industry as well. And between the lifting of COVID-19 restrictions, which caused an increase in travel demand, as well as the constraints that we experienced in the new and used car industry causing extreme supply issues, this caused the rental car industry to have some serious hardships. In fact, you may even remember in the summer of 2021 where people were getting abandoned in random cities and towns due to their rental car getting abruptly canceled and them unable to find a new one. Customers were waiting in line for hours to pick up their rental car. People were paying hundreds of dollars per day to rent a really normal car like a Nissan Sentra. And some creative minds even opted to rent U-Haul trucks, which at the time were more accessible and more affordable than a standard rental car. And as I'm sure you can guess, companies were able to profit massively off of this supply and demand. Companies like Avis, Enterprise, and Hertz saw huge profit and their stock price skyrocketed. And I'm gonna be honest, life wasn't too bad for Turo and car sharing hosts either. Because during the same time period, while demand shot up for rental car companies, it also shot up for peer-to-peer -peer car sharing as well. And all of a sudden, rental car alternatives became a hotly searched topic. And as somebody who has been deeply rooted and involved in the car sharing industry for over five years now, I can tell you that I have never seen the interest and the demand in car sharing and in Turo that I saw in the summer of 2021. And not only did my cars rent more often and at a higher daily price, but my Turo and car sharing related videos did extremely well on YouTube because people were all of a sudden very interested in this topic. But unfortunately, if there is one lesson that we have learned in the second half of 2022, it is that what comes up must come down and not everything can last forever. And we are certainly beginning to see this in the rental car industry as well. The rental car company Hertz posted recent earnings, and though the earnings were still higher than expected, they were quite a bit lower than this time last year. Hertz posted adjusted earnings of $1.08 per share, which was actually above the expectation of $1.05 per share. But when compared to last year, it was actually 12 cents lower per share. But the reason for the year-over-year -year decrease probably isn't what you think it is because it actually wasn't because of a decrease in demand in customers or a decrease in daily trip price. It was in fact depreciation costs. According to the Hertz CFO in an interview, depreciation is going to go up because of the net effect of used car prices coming down, but utilization is remaining high across the industry and Hertz. We're seeing undeniable strength. And according to Hertz, their fleet utilization is at 80%, which is on par with industry standards. Now, I think that this is really interesting, and this is actually something that I have been predicting and talking about a lot, specifically in the context of peer-to-peer -peer car sharing. When buying a car for a business, especially a rental car business like Avis or Hertz, or a peer-to-peer -peer car sharing business like the one that I run and the one that I know many of you who watch this channel run as well, money can be made or lost on the purchase of a vehicle. And my biggest concern with the used car spike price that we have seen over the last year has been with people who have potentially overpaid for a number of different cars that they have been listed on peer-to-peer -peer car sharing platforms like Turo or Getaround. And this concern is amplified with people that have overpaid for multiple cars that they have financed in order to list those cars on Turo. And they're actually not able to pay for those cars unless those cars are being actively rented out. And honestly, in some cases, this can be a recipe for disaster. So to address the question of this video, is the rental car industry crashing? And to be honest, in my opinion, I think the answer is no. But is there a good chance that we're going to be experiencing some major shifts in the rental car industry over the next couple of months or in the next couple of years? And I think the answer is a resounding yes. But let me explain. Over the last couple of years, we have seen high demand for rental cars, and as a result, rental car agencies or car sharing hosts have had huge profits off of the daily trip price of their cars. At the same time, these people and companies have had to pay a premium price for cars to resupply their car sharing fleets, and to an extent, this has been okay because prices across the board have been high. So companies and hosts have been able to get a higher daily trip price for the cars that they overpaid for. And because used car prices are high, if you needed to sell that car that you overpaid for, you were able to recoup the cost of that vehicle relatively easily. 
and actual cash values or ACVs of cars that have been totaled on car sharing platforms like Turo have also been high. So if a car has been totaled or wrecked, you are able to get a pretty penny for that damage. For example, my 2009 Hyundai Accent, which I bought for around $3,500 and was paid out over $6,500 in December of 2021 when it was totaled. Or my 2012 Yaris, which I paid $6,500, but when it was totaled in March, I was paid out $8,500. Or even my Maserati Ghibli, which I paid $29,500 and was paid out $32,000 when it was totaled in January. The high valuations of vehicles have to an extent been a bit of a safety net for rental car agencies and car sharing hosts. Because if a car needed to be sold or if a car was totaled, you were able to recoup the cost of that vehicle despite the fact that you overpaid for that car. And as a result, depreciation has been virtually non-existent for the last two years. But what happens when this is no longer the case? What happens when a car gets totaled and you get paid out only 75% of what you paid for that car? Or when you sell a car and you have to sell it for less than what you bought it for? This is where we'll begin to see the biggest shift in the rental car industry. And of course, this will affect the price per share and the profitability of rental car agencies. But at the end of the day, companies like Hertz or Avis knew this was coming sooner or later. And I doubt Hertz is surprised or even upset about their earnings because they knew this was inevitable. But car sharing hosts, on the other hand, are where I believe that we will see some pretty serious shifts because there are car sharing hosts out there that have overpaid for multiple cars and they will not be able to absorb the losses that large rental companies are able to absorb. And I predict that we will begin to see a lot of over leveraged car sharing hosts begin to go under. And another factor I do want to touch on is the demand factor. Hertz CFO did mention that demand is still strong, but this is another aspect of the equation that I think will begin to shift. Now, don't get me wrong, peer-to-peer -peer car sharing is still booming. I have 19 cars in my car sharing fleet and currently see about an 85 to 90% utilization rate. But I am also prepping myself and my business for a decrease in demand because I believe that as we head deeper into a recession, rental car companies and car sharing hosts will definitely take a hit. The severity of that hit though is definitely a question that's still up in the air. I've mentioned this in a lot of past videos, but we will see a drop in demand in the rental car industry, but the demand will not drop the same across the board. I believe that economical cars used to get to work, run errands, transport the family. These are segments of the rental car industry and peer-to-peer -peer car sharing industry that will not be heavily impacted by a recession. While exotic cars, high-end luxury cars, and tourist-focused cities, these are segments I believe will be impacted much more severely. And for car sharing hosts and car sharing companies that have over leveraged themselves in these segments, I think they could be in for a tough few years. In summary, I do not think the rental car industry is crashing, but I also don't think that we are immune to being impacted in some way, shape and form by a recession. Though as a host of low to mid tier economy cars, this is not something I'm overly concerned about. In fact, I get asked all the time if I'm still actively growing my car sharing fleet. And the answer is yes. In fact, I just bought my 19th car recently and plan to buy between two and four more cars between now and the end of the year. And if you're interested in learning and checking out how I recommend running and buying cars for a car sharing fleet, I will include some of my best videos down in the description below that I think could be a huge value to anyone that's interested. But as someone who has been in car sharing for five years and had remained profitable throughout this entire five year period of time, even during the worst part of the COVID-19 lockdowns, I think success in car sharing and rental cars really comes down to three key things. Don't over leverage yourself with debt. All of my cars are 100% paid off and owned outright. Buy at the lowest point of the depreciation curve. This is your safety net. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Don't only buy high-end luxury cars. Mix in some economical ones for some protection and diversification. And same goes for specific types of cars. I would definitely recommend diversifying your fleets with different makes, models, sizes, economical status, and so on. I wholeheartedly believe that if you do these three things, you will be able to withstand any shift that we see in our economy, as well as the rental and peer-to-peer -peer car sharing industry. And you will be well set for not only the next few months, but also the next few years as well. But with that being said, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some insight into the rental car industry and where things currently stand today. I hope that everybody has a wonderful and safe Halloween for those of you that celebrate it. And like always, if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.